Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic as ever to have you here because on today's episode, I'm, I'm busy, I've got some other stuff to do, but Will is going to be taking the helms on getting our forge put together because up until now we've been using this. Ah, my ears! <laughs> We've been using this, admittedly, it's a champ of a forge. It really, for the size and how simple it is, it's an amazing forge, but it's a little bit small for the stuff that we've been doing. We've been kind of maxing it out, running it a little bit past what we should have been running it at. So a bigger forge, actually, the inside chamber is four times the size of the inside chamber of this one. Uh, and it's going to be pretty darned amazing. Now what we're also going to try to do is make this a, a, a pretty safe forge because many forges have ceramic fiber uh, exposed or easily able to be exposed which can be quite dangerous. It's a carcinogen so what we want to do is we want to have our ceramic fiber blanket only as a backup insulation and then coat the rest in hard refractory so that we can make sure that it's as safe a forge as possible while still being a big efficient behemoth. Before we jump in though we want to thank Dave sponsor which is Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is the game that's gonna make you forget everything you know about mobile RPG games. It has just dropped. The graphics on this are just unbelievable. Look at this dragon. This is a man-eating dragon. This is, this is crazy. You have the choice to choose awesome champions like this guy here. The game is sure to be a great challenge. It's got a great storyline. They've got all sorts of champions to choose from, so be sure to check out all of those. Raid is getting really big, really fast, so make sure that you get in now so that you can get a head start. They're also having a special tournament very soon. Make sure that you go download it. It's completely free to download. You can go to my link in the description. Doing so is gonna get you 50,000 silver immediately, as well as a free epic champion as part of the new player program, courtesy of the dev team. Thank you, Raid Shadow Legends, for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys go download that. Well, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Good luck in building this forge. I've gotta go do some stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Let's jump into it. Our intern Kyle, before he left, cut all of the pieces that we're gonna need. So what I need to do now is go ahead, deburr everything, and then uh, get to welding. Okie doke, now that I have spent the longest possible amount of time in the grinding room deburring everything, turns out that deburring big heavy pieces of plate isn't the easiest thing in the world. We got it done though, cleaned up those plasma cuts, it's gonna look a lot nicer now. Uh, so now it's time to jump into welding up the frame of the like base of the forge. So what it's gonna sit on, we're basically making a cart with casters obviously. Uh, so we'll be able to roll it around, move it around where we want. Uh, so I'm going to start off by welding up two sides of that frame and then slapping them together. Should be pretty exciting. It's going to come together pretty quick from this point on. I'm excited to get to try out this Rhino cart from Stronghand Tools. I haven't really gotten to use it yet besides tacking up billets of Damascus, but that doesn't even really count. So let's jump into it. Alright guys, look at this. We got a frame welded up. Casters are going to go down here. I'm about to weld a lip, a four inch lip all the way around up on this piece of sheet metal uh, that we will put KO wool in and then pour castable refractory on top of that. So this will be the base forge will sit up here. Uh, it's coming along. Welding sheet metal isn't terribly easy, so we'll see how, uh, how that goes. At least it's an eighth inch thick. It's not, not terribly thin, but we're getting there. It's going to look awesome. It's going to be like a 185 pound forge when it's done. So good thing we have it on casters, otherwise <laughs> we would not be able to move it. Okay, so let's get to the welding of that little lip and then hopefully move on to the rest of it as well.
Okay, so what you guys just saw me do was first off, I welded around the uh, two kind of end shelves uh, just so that no debris will really get caught in there. And then I cut some cable wool and pressed it down into the bottom of that little dish, I guess, that we made. And now the next step is to do a little bit of math, figure out how much castable refractory we need to mix up to pour for the base of the forge. Uh, we're finally moving on to the actual lining itself. In the amount of time that it took the compressor to fill up with air, I figured out that we need 28 pounds of Mizu castable refractory. So, time to mix that up in a five gallon bucket and then we're just gonna pour it in there. I left the whole forge cart and base of it in the grinding room because it's full of K-Wool. I don't wanna bring it out until we have that K-Wool completely covered and sealed off uh, with that castable refractory because we don't want those particles getting in the air and tearing up our lungs. So, gonna go ahead, mix up that stuff, pour it in there, wait for a couple of days. Pretty exciting stuff, pretty exciting stuff. We've got it on the scale. It's zeroed to this five gallon bucket. This bag is 20 pounds. We'll just dump the whole thing in there. And then we need eight more pounds out of this box. Okay, that was super messy. Here's 24 fluid ounces and another 15. All right, now we mix. Ah, uh -oh. nice. That doesn't look good. No. Okay, so we need more. The camera turned off, that's my bad. Anyway, I poured 12 more pounds of refractory in here and it's still sitting low. And I think that's because there's kale wool underneath it and the kale wool just wants to compress down. Yeah, this should be pretty good. We'll do a layer of satanite over it, which reflects heat a little bit better than this Mizu does. So we'll get up a little bit, but it's still gonna be sitting a little low. Okay, now that the castable is setting in the forge, I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on the front, the top part of the forge, the front plate, the back plate, and the pieces that go over the top. So I've already laid out the initial, uh, where I'm gonna cut the arcs with, uh, with the plasma cutter for the opening of the forge, and then also where the arcs are gonna sit uh, on the top of the forge. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this huge pair of dividers, and uh, scribe some round lines, and then I'll whip out the plasma cutter and cut out my first uh, face plate, and then I'll move on to cutting out the back plate. Okay, so uh, this is short. Not a, not a terribly difficult thing to fix. I'll just have to cut out extra strips and weld them onto the side to make up the gap. This isn't going to bend that much to get to our, uh, this is when it's centered, not going to get us to our mark. So I'll just have to cut some, some extra strips or we might have some sheet metal that we can just slap on there and, and weld it up to, to fill up that gap. So not the end of the world, kind of sucks. Difficult to, to measure this out. Let's get to welding. Well, we had a slight intense failure to communicate as far as the plan for this forge between Alec and I. He drew up all of the plans. I was just kind of working from them. Turns out I suck at reading. Uh, this piece right here is supposed to actually sit inside on top of the uh, refractory in here so that the lining, not the lining, so that the steel doesn't get eaten away there. So this is actually going to sit back about a half inch on either side. So what I need to do now is whip out the old angle grinder, buzz off these welds, good thing they're terrible, uh, and then cut it about another inch and then cut it again uh, and then re-weld it back on. So, shouldn't be a terribly long time, uh, but we'll get this thing to exactly where it needs to be in no time.
Will, this thing is looking awesome. Thank you very much. Oh my goodness. I am sad that I haven't been able to do more on this. I.e. I've done nothing on this. But this thing is looking beautiful. Thank you. It's going to be one or two hecks of a No, no just one heck. One heck of a forge. One heck of a forge? Would your mind change when you look at this? This is the burner. This is called a ribbon burner. Uh, and so it's a little different, a little more kind of industrial style uh, than something I've used before, which will hopefully suit the fact that this thing is insanely huge. This is going to go inside here. Oh, it's heavy. So the way this works is we send in fuel mixed with air. That mixture then leaves through these orifices in the end, making lots of lots of tiny hot miniature hot, many, many hot miniature flames. Now part of the whole idea with this also is that this ribbon burner is gonna be sat right about here, which means it's not gonna be pointing the flame right at the work pieces, but instead it's gonna be coming across this radius top, creating lots of turbulence in there, spinning the flame around. And the more you get the flame to spin around a forge, the more even the heat is gonna be. Now for swords, big Damascus billets, this is just gonna hopefully be phenomenal. Doesn't actually look terribly big on the inside. The chamber itself will be flush with where the door is, so basically this four inches all the way around is gonna be solid in insulation which should be absolutely amazing. It means it'll heat up quick and then hold its heat really well. Next step is going to be cutting in the slot for where the burner's gonna sit, building up a mounting plate for it, making sure that it's gonna sit exactly where we want it. So now that we've got that burner mounting system, done up on here. What we're gonna go ahead and do is move on to building an indexing system for it so that this forge, the shell, the top of it is going to sit on the base in the same spot every time and also make sure that it's nice and level. This forge is looking phenomenal. It looks like great progress has been made. What have you what have you done to it? So obviously we've got the whole frame built up for it and we've got the burner mounting system there. Uh, what we need to move on to now before we do the refractory in the top of it is kind of building out the system to get the air and the gas into the forge because we have the blower, we have auto shutoff valves for it so that we won't accidentally blow ourselves up. Uh, so we just need to get some really, really simple pieces to, to be able to get all of the gases into here and stuff like that. So then after we get that all set up, we'll be able to do the top of the refractory and a pretty sweet set of moving doors so that we're not fumbling around with bricks and stuff like that. Super, super cool. I, uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled with how this is looking. This is looking great and I wish I could have got my hands dirtier on the thing. You're doing a great job, Will. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope that you have enjoyed this and I hope that you subscribe so that you can see us continue to finish off this forge. Get this thing ready to heat some big pieces of steel. Be sure to go download our sponsor's game today, Raid Shadow Legends, and get those 50,000 silver as well as an epic champion. Thank you so much for watching. Pleasure as always. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.